Joining us now is Ali Sifat, who's a former FBI special agent. He's a former FBI interrogator now offering a terrorism official. He's a operating officer. First up, he is a former FBI special agent. He's now chief operating officer for the Sufran Group on a global security consulting firm. In New York for WNYC, I'm Amy Eddings. As the investigation into the Boston Marathon bombings continues in the White House today, the White House today is defending how the FBI handled the Russian government's request for more information on one of the suspects, Tamerlan Tsarnaev. He was killed last Friday during the manhunt for him and his brother. The agency interviewed Tamerlan and his family in 2011, but found no terrorist activity. Russian authorities feared Tsarnaev, a native of the rest of Republic of Dagestan, was a follower of radical Islam. Now, several Washington lawmakers are asking whether the agency did enough to vet Martin D. Reardon spent 21 years with the FBI, where he directed the agency's Terrorist Screening Operations Center. He's now a vice president with the SUFAN Group, a New York-based strategic consultancy, and he joins us now from Doha. Hi, Martin. Welcome to WNYC. Uh, Good evening. How are you tonight? Fine. Thank you. Walk us through what typically happens in, in in this kind of interview. Well, I'm just actually beyond the interview, what happens in, with information received, like the Bureau received in 2011. Um, you know, receiving foreign government information or any information that an individual may be involved in terrorist activity, there are a number of options the Bureau have. And, and in this case, it was probably one of two. The first option would have been to open a, a threat assessment, which is basically conducted on individuals, groups, organizations, of possible investigative interest as threats to U.S. national security. Now, threat assessment, there are very limited things that uh, the FBI can do. Uh, They can obtain publicly available information. They can do database checks through the FBI system or any other federal, state, or local database. Uh, They can do non-pretext interviews. Uh, things they can't do, they can't do more, the more sophisticated investigative techniques. It's just a, a, uh, a threat assessment. Now, a second option would have been to open a preliminary investigation on, uh, on uh, Zarnev based on the foreign government information. Now, a preliminary investigation, it, it, it's done on an individual or a group when they may be an agent of a foreign power or a terrorist organization. Keywords being may be. Now, agents can use all the investigative techniques normally used in investigation that don't require court order. So there are a number of things that can't be done. No search warrants, uh, no intercepts of communications, other sensitive techniques. So there, there are some limitations there. And also with the preliminary investigation, there's a time limit. It has to be done within six months. During that six months period, you're either confirming that this person may be a member of a terrorist organization, in which case you open up a full field investigation or you close it. In this case, it appears that the FBI was not able to confirm based on the information they had, and they closed it. Right. Agents gave him the all clear after examining his telephone communications, his personal associations, his travel, and uh, where he received his education. What kinds of things among that uh, f- that that field of of area of inquiry would have set off red flags. Well, if they if they had if there were travel records at the time that indicated perhaps that he went to a country where uh, you know that that's known to uh, harbor extremist groups or where there were training camps uh, and and that was known, they could question him on there. Uh, other things. If they were looking at telephone records, and there were a number of telephone calls to subjects of other FBI terrorism investigations, or perhaps telephone numbers overseas that intelligence indicates are associated with a known terrorist, a suspected terrorist, or a terrorist organization, those are, those are the types of things that would raise red, red flags. Uh, in this case, you know, the FBI has not come out and said, what they saw, they may, they may not, uh, at least not uh, to the public. 
But I would say, having done this for a number of years, that the indications were that they did not get those telephone connections. That's something usually causes a preliminary investigation to go to a full field. The interview was at the request of the Russian government, and my understanding is that it didn't provide a lot of information on why it was concerned that Tsarnaev might be a problem. How common is it for the United States to investigate an individual based on another country's request or information? Well, I mean, it's, you know, the the FBI in particular has law offices in over 60 countries worldwide, and the purpose for those offices are to exchange information with the host country. So in this case, if it was the Russian government that provided this information, the FBI would look at it, and and they would, you know, do the due diligence. They would uh, either open a, a threat assessment, a preliminary investigation, and go from there. So that's not unusual at all. Uh, that's what the legal attaches overseas do. It's almost certain the FBI will be testifying in front of Congress about their investigation. What kinds of questions do you think they, they will need to answer? Well, Congress is going to want to know because they have this responsibility. They have responsibility for oversight of federal agencies to include the FBI. They're, want, they're going to want to know what the field office in Boston did when they received the information on Zanara. What uh, investigative steps did they follow? There are a number of steps that uh, in a preliminary investigation or a threat assessment that you generally do follow. Did they follow them all? Did they, uh, uh, you know, omit any of those uh, those steps? Right. Did they dot Was every there anything I there? cross they, every T? They didn't pick up on Right. Martin D. Reardon spent 21 years with the FBI, where he directed the agency's Terrorist Screening Operations Center. He's now a vice president with a New York-based strategic consultancy, the SUFAN Group. He joins us from Doha. Mr. Reardon, thank you very much. You're welcome.